Hello, good morning, students. How are you? Good morning. Okay, um, good morning, my Form 3 students. Eh? Okay, 3P7. Uh, first of all, uh, can you please um, perhaps give me feedback whether you're able to hear me loud and clear? Okay, I see comment here. Okay, right, thank you for your feedback. Okay, I see good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Corsin, Hui Hui, Ziying, Cos, <laughs> Crystal, Evelyn. Okay, everyone, good morning. Pun Yi Ching, good morning, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Can you hear me well and loud, loud and clear? I hope. Okay, yes. Cosin, thank you for your feedback. Okay, Chloe, good morning, Vivian. Okay, right. Uh, Stella, good morning, everyone. Okay, good. All right, we will uh, proceed today's lesson with uh, YouTube streaming here just for one, uh, almost one hour, I think. Today's lesson will be quite short. And then we proceed on to, um, we go on to Google Meet, okay, for our questions and answers and so on. Okay, now, first of all, uh, let me share screen. Okay, I hope you can see this. Oh, sorry, I had to... Yeah, all right. Okay, I hope you can see this. Yeah, I'm looking at it, so I think it should be no problem. Okay, in the previous lesson, we have learned, uh, we've learned about uh, the power station, okay? The six types of power station, and all these types of power station, they carry one, say, uh, they, they perform the same function, which is to produce or to generate electricity, okay? The only difference here is the source of energy that they use. So different types of power station will use different sources of energy. For example, some will use uh, coal or natural gas that will be called thermal power station. Then you have solar energy, right? That will be a solar energy cell. So that's a solar power station. Then you have using the potential force, a uh, potential energy of water. So that'll be hydroelectric. And using wind energy, that will be wind power station. Then using nuclear fuel, Okay, that will be nuclear uh, power station. Uh, then you have biomass. Okay, so these are the six types of uh, different types of power station which generate electricity for the usage, the general public. Okay, every one of us is so convenient nowadays. We just switch on the switch and we get electricity coming from the Naga National Bahad. Okay, now let's look at the types of current. Okay, so I know you've had this lesson uh, just the two days ago, but just a very brief one. But for recording purposes, I would like to uh, go through this again, okay, and for the benefit of other students as well. So there are actually two types of current, eh? okay. One is called DC, that's direct current. The other one is called alternating current or AC. Okay, now DC, sometimes people would think that it stands for dry cell. Actually, it doesn't stand for dry cell. DC stands for direct current. And you know why they think of dry cell? Because direct current is provided by batteries. So when you look at the word that DC, uh, you automatically think of a battery because the battery provides direct current. Okay, now let's look at what's the meaning of direct current. Okay, now you have learned it before last, uh, I think in form two, uh, when you see, uh, when you have already constructed a circuit, a simple electrical circuit consists of an energy source, which is the battery. Okay, let me change the color here. All right, now you have a battery. This is where the, uh, actually, we are going to see how the, the, the thing works. Huh? Then you have wire, you need to have wire. Okay, inside the wire, there will be, uh, of course, atoms, like okay? metal atoms. So you have electrons, electrons, okay? But unfortunately, this electron, if it's in the wire, they do not flow in a consistent manner. They don't flow in a direct, uh, orderly pattern. So they are all randomly, uh, these electrons, they move randomly. So imagine this is a piece of wire, okay? Wire with millions of electrons inside here. So at this time, at this moment, if you do not push the electrons to move in a systematic order or manner, the electrons are actually moving randomly. So they are like going all over the place, okay? Electrons here, another electron going this way, another electron going that way. So it's all randomly. So when that is, the electrons are moving randomly, it does not produce any electricity, okay? So you need to know how to push the electrons to make sure that they flow in one consistent direction. So if you're able to make your electricity, all right, let's say the electrons flow like this, flow from here, everything, all the electrons are orderly moving in one direction. Actually, what you have done is to produce electricity. 
So electricity in terms of gen, uh, definition, it is the flow of electrons in one direction. So, okay, let me write down here. I think you have forgotten your form two work. Nah? So electricity is actually defined as the flow of electron in one direction. Okay. So you must be able to push the electrons in a specific order. So they move not randomly, but in an, a direction. Okay. So how do you do that? How do you push the electrons? So you need some energy. Okay, you need to when when you want to do some work, you want to push anything along, you have to give them energy. So this energy actually comes from the battery. All right. Now when the battery, you know that there's a positive terminal and there's a negative terminal. Okay. So why is that positive terminal and there's negative terminal? It just means that okay, this battery consists of uh chemicals inside that. So this chemical reaction between uh, this substance and this substance will produce electrons. So at the negative terminal, there will be a lot of electrons accumulated. So in the negative terminal, all right, let's look at the common battery. Lah. You can see it. Okay, this is the positive one. The one that juts out is a positive. Then this is the negative. So when you have a chemical reactions like that, a lot of electrons will be generated towards the negative pole. There is a huge amount of electrons here. Okay, more here compared to the positive. So you have a difference. This is called a concentration gradient. When you have more electrons on the negative side, so what happens is when you connect it to a wire, okay, let me draw a wire here. You have more electrons on the negative side. If I were to put a wire and I join the positive to the negative, all right, uh, this one is the wire. I connect the negative to the positive. I have a lot of electrons here. Okay, let me draw more here. And I draw less over here. Doesn't mean it doesn't have. It will have, but it has less. Okay, so the positive terminal is up here. And the negative terminal is down here. So you have more electrons at the negative terminal. And what it does is, if you have some, some a place which has more and the other one has less, there is a difference in the uh, potential. So usually things will always move from more to less. Never less to more. Unless, of course, you're pumping it, lah. you're putting energy to pull it. But this one, it flows naturally. When you have an area which is more, more electrons, and compared to another place which has got less, what happens is the electrons will automatically flow from more to less. And at the same time, when it's flowing, it's actually pushing the electrons along. So it's pushing the electrons. The electrons are going very, very uh, predictably in one direction. Okay, so all of them move in a predicted direction. So you have a, a general flow of electrons in the wire. Okay, so the copper wire here has its own electron. It's just that the battery provides the pushing force to push the electrons along. Then you have electrons moving all along the way here. All right, of course, it comes back to the the pole which has got less electron compared to the positive. Now, if you were to add, right, add an co electrical component, let's say you put a bulb here, okay, you would put a bulb here, you will find that the bulb will be lighter, okay? The very same reason is because the electrons are being pushed along, it actually creates electricity. So actually, I am revising your Form 2 knowledge about electricity. Electricity is generally the flow of electrons in one direction. So therefore, you need something to push it. And something to push it is actually what we give the energy. This is connect. This is contained in the dry cell or the battery. So this battery, actually, we say it gives you the pushing force. Okay, to push the electrons along. So push the electrons along, then you get current. Okay, now this pushing force is also known as what we know is voltage. So you've seen all these words also in Form 2. You have learned current, you have learned voltage and also resistance. So voltage is actually the pushing force that is provided by an, uh, a source of energy. Lah. And in this case, it's the battery to push electrons. Okay, so now, now you see the electrons are flowing in one direction. And it's flowing, if it doesn't change direction, it's always from negative to positive. Then you will call this a direct current. Okay, and this is true for batteries. So batteries, the direction of the current is always from negative, not current, uh, direction of the electrons, sorry. Direction of the electrons is always from negative to positive. It doesn't change direction from positive to negative. The electrons will always flow from negative to positive. 
Okay, so this is what it means by direct current. So direction of current, all right, is only one direction. So this is shown in this diagram. All right, I'm not showing, I do not want to show. This is I, uh, I means current. So current, uh, we are talking about electrons in the first, uh, we are current, I'll deal with it later. So electrons always come from the negative. So you look at this, the shorter line re represents the negative. The longer line represents the positive. So this is the battery. So electron moves along the wire, right? It goes through past this resistor. Then the electrons comes back here. Okay, so this is the direction. And it's always like that. So we call this direct current. Okay, so what do you get? What kind of direct current? Uh, what kind of uh, uh, devices would provide you with direct current? So it's all these batteries. Okay, like... Uh, batteries that you use in the torchlight, the batteries that you put in a calculator, these are all dry cells, okay? They are, they all provide direct current. This is the button type, uh, the small little battery right, that you put into your watch and your calculator. Toy car, okay, the alkaline batteries and so on. Solar cell also provides direct current, okay? So solar cell using photovoltaic cells. Then, uh, have you seen this thing? This is a car battery, okay? Car battery, when you open the boot, uh, the bonnet, not the boot, the boot is behind. You put your luggage there. So the boot is, uh, sorry, the, the, the bonnet, they call it the bonnet, a hood. Yeah? Right? Americans, you call it hood. The British, you call it the bonnet. So when you uh, open the bonnet, all right, you will see this small, uh, this one big box here. Okay, this is actually a car battery, which provides the current to start your car. So usually you notice that when cars cannot start, it's most probably because the car battery has died. That means there's no more potential energy inside there. There's no more uh, uh, current, all right? It just cannot produce any current. So you need that car battery to actually start your car, okay? To, to ignite the ignition system that you need, yeah? You need the car battery. So when it cannot start, the first thing you can think of automatically, you find that you, you can check your car battery. So if it's out, all right, that means that's why there's a reason why you cannot start a battery, uh, your car. Okay, so this is called lead acid accumulator. This also provides uh, voltage, uh, this provides current, uh, the energy to push the electrons. So, usually, a car battery uses about I think 12 volts, if I'm not mistaken. Then, for this, is the common uh, batteries, uh, the dry cells we have is about 1.5 volts. Okay, the, 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 the cylindrical type one is 1.5. The bigger one, so the A, a D size and the C size is also 1.5. It's just the size only. The casing is different. But the voltage they provide is the same. One unit of this provides 1.5 voltage. Okay, volts. Volt. And for the square ones, this one's 9 volts. So this is for devices that need uh, maybe more power. All right, this is the square one. One I showed you just now. Ah, this one. This one would probably, uh, this is usually 9 volts. Okay, for this one, the normal one is 1.5 volts. Okay, you can see that is the at the label. You can look at it at the label, right? So now that is your dry cell, and it doesn't change direction. Okay, that's the most important thing. So the electrons will move from the negative here, go past uh, into the of course the, the bulb, right? And it lights up your your uh, heats up your tungsten wire, and it becomes hot, and then it will glow. Then it goes here, comes back to the positive terminal of the battery. So we're talking about electrons now. Huh? Okay, now we go on to alternating current. Why do we have another type? Okay, alternating current. This is the type of current where the flow of electron is not fixed. It's not always uh, from this end to this end. It's not fixed. So at one moment, the electron will flow from this direction, which is a negative terminal, to the positive terminal. Okay. And then the next moment, it switches direction because that positive has become negative now. So it goes the other way. So it's like zigzag, zigzag here and there. Okay. That is an alternating current. Okay. So it's the electric current that flows in constantly reversing direction. So at one moment, okay, if we look at this diagram, okay, now this is the AC uh uh current and usually we use the symbol we don't put this is for uh for the direct current you put long and short long and short this shows direct current so if it is ac right direct alternating current we put this symbol like a s shape to show that it is an alternating current now this what i'm showing here these two lines here so at one moment all right maybe this is the negative terminal so the electrons will flow this direction okay this is the flow of electron Right. And then after that, immediately after that, 
the terminal here will switch. This one will become the negative and this is the positive. So the direction reverses. Electron flows this way back to here. So it goes switch. It goes like this. You know, you look at my finger, right? It goes this way and that way and this way and that way and this way and that way. So it continuously changes direction. And how often does it change direction? Or how fast does it change direction? How fast? So in the electricity supply that comes to our houses, okay, we have our Tanaga National Supplier. They are the ones, the company, the big company that makes electricity for all over Malaysia, okay, for the whole of Malaysia. So this Tanaga National generates the electricity, okay, and the frequency. The frequency is a measurement of how often uh, the changing, we call it the, the vibration, okay, vibration or the change in current or the direction. Uh. So how often does it do that? In one second, it already changes 50 times. So you can imagine, you know, the moment you say one, one is already one second, okay, you say one, one thousand two, one thousand three second. So in that one second, the direction has already changed 50 times. So it's actually very, very fast, right? One second already, there are 50 changes of direction already. So uh, that's why we call our frequency, the frequency of our electricity here is 50 hertz. Hertz is the unit for vibration. Hertz is the unit for all this, lah, all right? the changing of direction. So it's like oscillating. The, the direction changes, switches direction. Okay, so 50 hertz frequency of the current that comes to houses is at the AC. So let's look at this one. So for uh, alternating current, the flow of electrons is back and forth. Okay, in reverse direction. So at one moment it's like this, the next next moment the other way. So it switches continuously. So electrons move this way, and after that it moves the other way. All right, let me just change this one. So now electrons, oh, sorry, electrons are uh, still coming coming for electrons. Uh. So if this is negative, it goes this way. All right, electrons, and then the next moment this terminal will switch. This will be positive, and this will be negative. So now it switches this way. Okay, so this is a concept that you have to accept, or even though you can't see it, right? Like I said, a lot of things in science doesn't mean that you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Okay, we the, the scientists have done for hundreds of years experiments after experiments to prove the existence of such theories. So uh, we have to accept it lah, because we're not able to prove it, we do not have the means to prove it. So a lot of things that you now have been proven through science. It does exist, just that we are not able to see it. It's beyond our limitation of sight and our... But doesn't mean that you cannot understand, all right? It is not beyond the limitation of understanding. We can understand, all right? We can okay, able to accept it, but doesn't mean that we always able to see it. Okay, now let's look at the source. Where do you get this kind of AC and DC? So when I say AC, it means alternating current. When I say DC, is direct current. So all the types of battery, all right? battery, yeah, it's where you get your direct current because the terminal doesn't change. If it's positive, it's forever positive. If that terminal is negative, it's forever negative. It doesn't switch direction, okay? So these solar cells also produces electricity in direct current. Okay, accumulators, this is the, just now I mentioned about the car battery. This is the lab accumulator, okay? That is your DC, uh, sorry, DC. Now AC, AC is the um, is produced in generator. Remember, we learned the previous lesson, power station. This is, you know, all the power stations have a generator except for the solar power station. The generator inside, when it produces, when, remember the, the wire core spins, right? Wire core spins and cuts the magnetic field lines. So that will induce the current. Now, that current is not fixed direction. So it is at one moment, it's positive, then negative, then it changes direction. So that is the AC, okay? You do not know in detail how the generation of electricity works. You learn it when you go for physics in Form 4 and Form 5. Then you will see the uh, how it works, okay? The generator, how come one moment is positive, the other moment is negative, right? You need to, to, to concern your pretty heads now uh, in Form 3. So what you don't need, don't go and crack your brain over it because you will waste a lot of your time. Okay, now, so if you see if you're on a, uh, a machine or a device that can see as a pattern, Right now, if the direction doesn't change, let's say for the DC, the direction doesn't change, then the pattern, right? You will have a fixed voltage. Positive is always positive because it will never change to negative. So, as you know, when you draw a graph, right, everything above the zero is positive, everything below is negative. So, 
If it's positive all the time, you find that the graph is always on the positive side here, always above your zero. Yeah, and it doesn't change, all right, because it doesn't switch direction. But for the AC, which alternating current, you find that here, this is your zero, right? You learn your graph before, you have plotted graph before, and you're from three. Positive, you see the this is positive. It goes up positive. And then after that, it will switch to negative. So that's why you can see the pattern of the graph, it goes down. So positive, negative, positive, and then change again, positive. So you use wave pattern. Okay, for the AC, this is the pattern that you get when you connect it to that device to show you the, the, the current, the switch of the current. So positive, negative, positive, negative. So you can see a wave. All right, so this is very simply to give you an idea that the pattern of the wave uh, of this uh, current here is different. One is always fixed direction. The other one changes positive, negative, positive, negative. So you get up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so examples, calculators, toy car, anything. Uh, just literally think of all the things that you need a battery you can use a battery for. Calculator, you put batteries, okay? Handphone, also you put battery, correct? The battery is rechargeable, uh, right? That is also... DC. Our phone, handphones, right? Uses DC. Okay. Then for things that cannot use battery, for example, your TV, right? When your, your out power outage, that means ting dian, the electricity, right? TNB uh, doing some maintenance work. They switch off, no current, no more electric houses. You can't put, you can't hook it up. You can't hook your TV up to a, a battery. It doesn't work because uh, it's not designed to work on DC, right? So it uses AC. So television, air conditioner, heater, your oven, right? Your microwave oven, your refrigerator, your washing machine. And the current doesn't come to your house. It's that you, you can't use it. You can't wash your clothes. You can't, unless you have a generator on your own. Okay? As a system. When you don't have electricity, you can switch on your generator. Then you can have a few hours of electricity. Okay? So uh, that's how it may. So... Now, this is what we have mentioned so far. Okay, so let me look at uh, here. So, or oh, aircon, hair dryer, whatever, and so on. So, this current changes. Now, one more concept I would like to explain to you. Huh? Now, if the question asks you, what direction of electron flow? Okay, so this is a, this is a, a concept that a lot of people uh, do not know and they do not get to understand. I hope. I make you understand, all right? Now, you know that we have learned just now, electron always flow from negative to positive. The reason is because always you have more electrons at the negative side. The negative terminal, we say the negative terminal, is the part that produces electrons. So when you have more at one side and the other side has got less, automatically it will flow from more to less. This is an universal law. You never have something flowing from less to more, okay? That's against the... The, the potential energy, right? You need to have it's more. So the negative will always have more electrons. Must at the negative terminal and the positive terminal will have less. All right? So that's why uh, electrons will always flow from negative to positive. Okay? So when the question asks you, what is the direction of flow for is So anywhere in a wire, in the battery, whatever, it is negative to positive. If the question asks you for current flow, current flow means electrical current, okay? Electrical current represented by the symbol I. For in physics, current is represented by the symbol of I. So if you have, the question asks you current flow, what is the current flow? Okay, current flow, we take it to be positive to negative. So remember this. All right, positive to negative. Right, then some bright genius student will ask me teacher didn't you just say electron flow is from negative to positive all right but why you say current flow is positive to negative isn't electron flowing making electricity okay just now we mentioned earlier what is electricity the flow of electron in one direction Okay, remember you said earlier in the beginning of the lesson just now, I said that electricity, that means karana, right? Electricity means karana. It's actually the flow of electron in one direction. So if you say electron flow in one direction, this one makes electricity. How come the now you see the direction changes? How come now it's positive to negative? When I talk about current, how come it must be positive to negative? How come when I say electron, it must be negative to positive? 
Okay, so a lot of people actually not many students ask me lah. But this is something if you use your mind to think, you must be thinking. You really tell me ma, electron move from negative to positive. Okay, and then you also tell me electron flowing is what make electricity, like current, current. Then how come you say current positive to negative? Yeah, <laughs> right. So you must be thinking, well, why is it so funny, right? Okay. So so far, I have only have a few students who ask me in my in my history of teaching for so many years, lah. In fact, not many, lah, because they they don't really think about it. Instead, they just we just feed you and then that's it. So actually, now we're trying to change that. Okay, in our less in our curriculum now, we're going more to kebab. We do not want you to feed you, feed you, feed you all the time with the facts. And you just remember, remember, and then exam time, you just want to, you vomit out your, your facts and then you expect to get full marks. Okay, it doesn't work because we want your mind to think. Okay, so if you had made the connection with what I mentioned just now, you will say that, right? Just now I say, I said negative to positive is electron flow, all right? But electron is the same thing as uh, current is electron flow, ma. How come you say electron flow is negative to positive? But how come current flow is positive to negative? Okay, so now I'm going to explain this, right? So you listen up. Uh, okay, this has to go to go back to history, history of the discovery of electricity. Okay, so um history, yeah, uh, right. Last time you see uh 17 something, uh, 1759, 57. Okay, this is Benjamin Franklin, the famous person. Remember, if you learn some story books and all that, the uh, person who discovered that is such thing called electricity. Remember, this one person uh, called Benjamin Franklin in USA, he was flying a kite, and then uh, and the kite there, he he tied a, a key. So when the kite was flying, he was flying it in thunderstorm, all right, thunderstorm. So when the lightning struck, all right, the the, the, the voltage uh, from the thunder, the lightning, um, Pass through the like the 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 his uh, whatever uh, kite and the the current passed through to the metal key that it was tied to it and then he got a shock. Okay, he got a shock. Then he discovered that that's such thing called electricity. So at that time after that, people did not know what electricity is made of. How do they generate electricity? They do not know. So at that time, all the scientists and they already agreed. They come to a convention. A convention means agreement. Nah. They, come to, they, they come to an agreement that since we know there's such thing called electricity, we are going to call it, okay, electricity flows from positive to negative. Okay, so everybody fix it that way. All right. We do not know how to explain. How to explain where you get electricity? Don't know. Never mind. Don't worry about it. We just want to use electricity. So it's positive to negative. Okay, we consider it as Posit uh, electric, electric, electricity, that means current flows from positive to negative. Okay, and that's it, right? Finish. Then, of course, after that, you know, science never stops, right? So, more scientists come and investigate and then they do research and so on. So, later, later, in about 18 something, about 150 years later, you know, almost 100, 100 over years, yeah, about 120 years later. So, in 18 something, then later they discovered that. What causes electricity is actually the flow of electrons. Okay, the flow of electrons. So it's actually electrons flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So that means they say, oh, actually, you know, we have like put the horse be, be before the carriage. Huh? That means uh, we already done something and then now we found something that is contradicting the original thing. Okay, so actually it's electrons flow from negative to positive terminal. Ah, then they explain, oh, this is how it works. This is more scientific lah, because they have already proven that it's electron and so that. Because uh, Rutherford has, uh, Thomson, Thomson uh, have already proven that there's such thing called electrons in the, the atom of the molecule. Okay, so now oh, oh, what are we going to do on the physics? Side? But we already mentioned earlier that electron uh, current flows from positive to negative. Now you want to change everything. And now, oh, we already, whatever we already thought of, it, we, our convention is actually wrong. More than 100 years have gone by. Then only we realize what we have done is wrong. So now what are you going to do? Are we going to change everything back? Change whatever you have, all the convention, that all the positive to negative. We mentioned that earlier, isn't it? By that time, formulas have been written. A lot of the laws have already been created. Okay, laws of the current and so on. So, Okay, so now they say, oh, actually, this, the our our what we have proven now actually, uh, what we have already mentioned earlier doesn't really it's not supported by our experiment now. So what do we do now? So 
the scientists have all agreed and said, okay, we're not going to change it now. Right? We're not going to change it because it's very messy to change something that you have already fixed for 100 over years and a lot of uh, maybe laws and also uh, this, uh, you know, um, formula has been written on, on this base, on this principle. So if you want to change everything all over again, it's going to be very messy. So they say, okay, no need. No need. Now we say if common flaw, we fix it, all right? Fix it as positive to negative. Okay, so remember that when you go to form four, form five, current, all right, current flow is always positive to negative. But when a question asks you for electron flow, electron flow, you take it to be negative to positive. So it's just like that. Okay, just like that. So just like I say, it's so messy to change. Right? For example, let's say now in Malaysia, right? Everybody drives on the left side of the road. Okay, we drive on the left side. So imagine uh, one day the government says, okay, now everybody, now we're going to change it. We're going to follow America. You know, America, they drive on the right side of the road. Okay, America, only like, I think only America, one or two countries in this whole world that drives on the right side of the road. So let's say, imagine the government one day say, okay, now everybody here going to drive on the right side of the road. Everybody be so confused. Isn't it? You change suddenly, change a new law like that, and then everybody's so used to driving on the left side. And then suddenly on the right side, they find that it's not. It's going to be against what you normally do. You're going to create a lot of problems. So that's why they don't change it. All right, that's one of the very same reason why they don't change it. So just remember, look carefully at the question. Are they asking for electrical current, or are they asking for electron? So you're asking for electron flow negative to positive, current flow positive to negative. All right, okay, so that I hope that clears the air. All right, a lot of students do not know that they just, you know, at all, like that, like that, like that, all right, but they never make the connection. Hey, why? Yeah, I thought you told me, you told me electron flowing negative positive, but isn't electron mix, isn't the flow of electron current equal to current? How come not about it? So they just has to go with history, yeah? okay, so now you know the history behind it, all right, so it's very interesting how these things come about. Okay, now let's go to next part. All right, so we have learned about ACDC. So ACDC, like you mentioned here, there's a pattern, right? So we're going to look at a device that can show you this pattern. Remember when I say, I show you this picture here? You see that it's a wave pattern, right? Because the direction keep on changing. So you need a device to show this, all right? The change of current, I mean the direction of the terminal. So this machine is called cathode ray oscilloscope. CRO for short, CRO. Okay, I'm sure right, you've seen a lot of movies, right? A lot of movies, the hero or the heroine lying on the hospital bed, okay? <laughs> lying on the hospital bed and hook up the body, is the, the heart is hooked up to a machine and then you will see the pattern, yeah? the, the, thing to, the, 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 the machine uh, goes like this, then it goes up and then like that, ah, then again like that, right? Again like that, ah, this one's still alive, law, right? The heart's in between, boop, boop, right? Boop, boop. So that's, current eh? our, our heart actually runs on this electrical impulse so you have a current there that's why why the pattern comes in this machine eh? right this is the cro so and then when the, 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 the red heroin dies everybody starts crying right the line becomes right flat right flat that means no current why no current because it's on the y-axis so this is zero okay you learn in how you draw how you plot a graph right you y-axis and x-axis so if the line is here, all right, the line is here, all right, the pattern is like this, oh, habis lah, heroine bye-bye already, the hero bye-bye, okay, your your actor bye-bye already, I mean actor lah, the, 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 the jujue lah, okay, so this is a zero, right, if the pattern is here, anything higher than your zero, that means there's a voltage, okay, there's a voltage, anything below here is also voltage, but negative terminal, that means it's a negative, uh, the negative, uh, what lah, the, cup, the current is a opposite terminal, right? So if it's on the zero, that means there's dian, no electrical current. If it's positive, this is the positive terminal, then negative, negative terminal. So this on this screen, you can see the pattern. Okay, now, why do we call it oscilloscope? What's the meaning of oscilloscope? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Oscilloscope is from the word oscillate. Okay, you learn that in form one. When you have a pendulum, okay, you tie... <coughs> sorry, a bob, a metal bob, uh, a pendulum on a string, and then you let it yaw, right? You let it move from A to B and come back to A. This is a full, uh, what do call it? a full cycle, uh, right? A full, one oscillation, you call it oscillation. You, 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 you oscillate, must be A to B, and then come back to A. Then we consider one, 
If A to B is not considered one, it's only half only. So A to B go back to A is considered one oscillation. Okay, then the word oscillation. Why do you use this word oscillation? Because something is moving there. This is actually inside. Lah. But you don't need to know this, all right? This is how it looks like. This is called a cathode ray tube where they they shoot the electrons, electron beam lah, at, of course, high, 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 high uh, speed. Lah, and it hits a screen and you will see the pattern there. You'll see a pattern there. So when it hits the screen, okay? And uh, this one, the, the electrons actually, uh, the system goes out. It's just that there's coming out oscillation there, okay? You don't need to... Uh, you don't need to learn this unless you go to physics in higher second, up from four, from five. All right. So now, what does this tube do? This is an electronic device that shown is used to show the differences in the shape. Uh, you can see the shape of the graph when you connect your current to it. You can see the shape whether it goes up, go down, or whatever is flat or whatever. Direction of current to see whether it's positive or negative, whether it's positive or negative, right? And the voltage change. Okay. For what you can test it for direct current, you also can test for AC. So you connect your AC to this machine or you connect your DC to the machine. Then you can see the pattern. Okay, so how do you handle this? So there are uh, three knobs that you should pay attention to. Lah. The rest no need to remember, okay? So there are three knobs here. Let me see if I have any... Uh, okay, nothing here so far. Okay, nothing, so no questions. Now, three knobs, right? Now, first of all, you need to connect your AC or DC. So you need to switch. There's a switch here. If you're connecting to AC, you put it to AC side. Lah. You just push the switch to AC if you are testing your AC. And then the other one is DC. If you're putting your DC current there, direct current, then you switch it to the other side. This is called a switch only. That's all. Nothing much there. Okay. Now, the other shift knobs, no need to remember. Now, you just remember this Y gain knob. Y gain knob is to uh, increase the magnitude. Okay. You want to pull it, you want to pull the 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 the, the spot nah, that because when the electron hits, the electron hits the screen, it's going to glow. So you can see the spot there, the glowing there. So when you uh why gain not when you increase this one, you pull it longer. So it becomes one line. Okay, it becomes one line. So you change the magnitude. Magnitude is how big it is, how strong the current is. It's a magnitude, right? How strong, how big it's called magnitude. So when you switch on, you increase the Y gain, you're actually pulling the dot here. So it's not going to be a dot, it's going to be a line now because you're pulling it uh, uh, vertically, right? It becomes a line, right? Next one, intensity control is to control the brightness. And this is nothing much. You want to make it bright. When I say it's too dark, you right? make it brighter, okay? Then this one is to control the sharpness on it control the sharpness to make sure that the, the dot here is sharp. That's all. Okay, nothing much. And here, the time-based knob. Uh, this is important. When you increase the uh, time-based knob here, you turn it, you can increase it. Uh, what you're doing is you're pulling the dot here at, uh, lengthwise. That means, uh, just now it was da zi, isn't it? Now it's da hen. That means it's you're pulling the, the graph and make, make, make it long. All right? So you sweep it across so it makes it longer. That's all. Okay, now you will not see, understand it now until I tell you, I show you how it works. Okay, so you just remember that you have these knobs here to increase the change, the magnitude, all right, of the light spot and also to control the movement, whether you want it to move sideways or you want it to move up and down. Okay, so this is you increase the, by turning the knob. Okay, now let's look at how it works. Lah, huh? Then you can, from here, you can see what is the pattern. So now you use a cathode ray oscilloscope, we call for short CRO, to show the difference in the shape of graph, direction of current, and the voltage change for Liang Zhong, uh, two types. Uh, you're going to test for AC and also DC. Okay, DC, AC. So first of all, let's do DC, okay, direct current. So you need to have dry cell. Uh, okay, if you want to test direct current, you need dry cell batteries for short. Okay, so you have to connect, all right? You connect the, the dry cell to the CRO. Now, first of all, when you connect it, uh, uh, you switch, you, you, you don't switch on, you do not, uh, what do you call it? You switch off, it, switch it off first. You, you connect the, the DC there, but you do not switch it on. So there's no current. There's no current. So you'll find that there's, there's going to be a dot here and it shows zero. Okay, it shows zero. And you don't switch on the time base. Off means uh, you don't pull it. When you switch on, off here is the time-based knob. Time-based knob is this one. This one I just mentioned here, this one. The time-based knob. Okay? 
when you switch on the time-based knob, you're actually pulling the graph, you're pulling the graph longer. So when you do not switch it off, uh, do not switch it on, that means off now, right? The first one on the left-hand side is off. Huh? So off, you get a dot there because there is no current. You didn't put any zero, right? Uh, the, 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 what they call the direct current now is you didn't connect, you didn't connect yet. Okay, you put zero, one dot. Now, now you switch on, switch on the time-based knob. You switch on the time-based knob on, this one is on. Now you will see now it stretch. The dot here become long, it become a line. You can see here. Sorry, uh, I'll put green color to compare. Right, you see here? Ah, so you, you pull it, you pull it, the same dot, the same dot, right, at the same place. is zero because no current, it's zero volt. Right now, zero volt. Ah. So you pull it, you get like this one line, right? So basically, this is no current. You did not, you did not connect. You did not connect your DC there. I mean, you connected, but you switch it off first, lah, right? You get this. Now, this is the first one. Next one. Now you're going to put one volt, okay? From your your this one, uh, dry cell here. This is your DC. You connect to this Y input. Now you're going to put one car, uh, one volt. Okay, that means there's going to be current. There's going to be current there. So you connect and see what happens. Now, what is the uh, output you're going to get? What's the pattern you will see on the screen? So the pattern is like this. First of all, the first on the left-hand side, you switch off the time-based knob. Switch off. Always remember, when you switch off the time-based knob, you're not going to get a line. You get a dot only because you don't pull it. If you don't pull it, you get a dot. Okay, you get a plot. So here for the number uh, here, seven here, right, off. Uh, this is off. Time base is off. Uh, you find that now it becomes the dot is no longer zero. The dot is no longer zero because you have already put one volt there. Uh. You, see? you see here? You already put one volt. One volt. One volt cannot be zero, so it has to go up. So this is one. Okay, on top here is one. But it is a dot here because you did not switch on your time base knob. So it's a dot there. All right. Now next, now you repeat, right? But now you switch on the time base knob. When you switch on the time base knob, you will see basically the same position. Your dot is still up there here, one one uh, one volt, uh, one B. Uh, but now become a line. It became a line because we pull it. All right. It's like the, the electrons, you know, it, 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 it's just like, you make the graph longer, that's all. You just pull it. So you're going to see one line. Okay, so let's say this is one volt, right? So at one here, one V here, the, 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 the number here is one, right? And you can see this is the position of the line. Okay, so this is DC. And it doesn't change direction, it's always positive. You see, positive, right? It's positive. It doesn't go to negative. Now, now you 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 change the terminal, right? When you connect, eh? just now you see you connect this one, right? You connect this one. Positive to negative, uh, positive here. This is the positive, this is the negative, right? Now you're going to switch the wire around. The positive just now was positive, you couldn't connect to the negative. Negative couldn't connect to positive. So you switch it around, okay? Now you reverse the connection. Reverse the connection, that means, okay, this is the terminal that is positive, all right? The wire goes like this. This is a positive terminal. This is the negative terminal. So originally the wire was like this. Okay, you connect like this. All right. Now you go and switch this wire. You go here, and this wire you go there. Okay, you switch the reverse the connection of the terminal. Positive go to negative and negative positive. All right. Now you do the same thing. All right. You do the same thing now. You will see now if you switch on to one volt, not, not one but five. Uh, I think the question say one volt. Uh, so now it goes to the negative already because you already switched the direction. Just now positive, now it becomes negative. So now you see it goes down to the negative. This is a zero. Anything below your zero is a negative. Uh, so this is negative one. Okay, and this is time based, not it's off. When it's off, that means it's one dot only. Always remember that. Okay, yeah, you did not pull the line. Okay, you did not extend the dot there. Now, now you do another one, you switch on, switch on the time-based knob, you get basically the same thing, except that now this dot has been lengthened, pull long like that. Uh, that's why you get this line, okay? So the patterns for direct current, so far we've done only direct current, uh, you will either get a dot or a line, okay? So you, let's, let's look back. So a dot is if you switch off, uh, if, you, if it's no current, 
a dot uh, and zero. A dot at zero, no current. That means you did not switch on, right? No, no TN, no electricity. Uh, no AC connect, no DC connected there. And then if it's switch, the time base not is on, you get a line. Basically, it's the same place, but longer. Then you connect your DC supply there. Depends on how strong. Uh, if it's one volt, it go to one. If you put two volts, it will come up to here. Okay, let's say two volts. Sorry, yellow. Uh, if it's if it's two volts, maybe it will come up to one and a half. Ah, uh, here. Maybe this is going to be a dot here. If it's two volts, two volts, it go up but higher. If it's three volts, it goes some more higher. Okay, so basically, if you have a time based knob, you switch it off, you get a dot. But now, because there's current, it will not be at zero, it'll be somewhere higher. Okay, it'll be any lah, compared to, uh, depends on your, your voltage. Lah. Okay, if you switch it on, then it's going to pull, be pulled there. Same place, but longer. You get line. Now, if you reverse the connection, just on the positive side, the clip, lah, the, the crocodile clip, just switch direction, you will get the negative, this voltage now has become negative instead of negative one now negative positive one now negative one and the dot is at the bottom and if you switch the time base knob on you get a line okay so this is dc now let's look at ac more interesting okay the pattern looks beautiful okay now let's look at the dc uh, sorry ac yeah now ac you need to of course connect to a power supply lah, all right now this is a called power pack all right we have it in the lab so here uh you put, uh, of course, you connect it to the power source. So in Malaysia, our power source here is our, this uh, inner socket there, right? Which is the, the, the voltage that comes to our house is 240 volts. Which is very high, right? Quite high. So we do not want to handle so much. So we, we, we connect it into this uh, power pack. We want to re, uh, uh, switch it down. We want to, we call it, this is a transformer actually. Yeah? Uh, we want to, what do you call, don't want to put 240 volts. Huh? We want to, uh, step it down, we call reduce. We reduce the uh, voltage. Let's put it to two. Lah, all right. So after passing through, after passing through this device called transformer, adapters, or lah, you will get, let's say, two current, two volt, two volt. Right? So now we're going to put the two volt into our CRO and see the pattern. Okay. Now, so you connect two volt, right? You're using two volt now, two volt from the power output. So this is AC, right? AC. Not from battery, yeah, battery DC. So now what we do is the first thing is you're going to use a time base. Uh, you switch it off the time base. Now here it's not going to be a dot because the direction changes. For AC, the direction changes, so it will be positive, negative, positive, negative. It's like this dot, all right. This dot is not a zero because <clears throat> you switch it on already. Tie your uh current of two volts, so it goes up to, and then the next moment it comes down. Because it switches current, it switches direction. I mentioned to you earlier, AC, positive, neg positive, then negative two, positive, negative two, positive, negative two. So imagine one moment is positive two, the next moment is negative two. So you see that this line, it will be like, you know, the like the current, you're forming this kind of line, which is going to be a straight line. It's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So imagine you're running on a spot, right? Up, down, up, down, up, down, only on the same spot. Okay. Now that is the pattern that you get when you switch off your time base but you put two volts ac ac two volts ac ac means it switches so it has to be positive and negative at the same time so it's like this you know up down up down up down okay not at the same time not the next moment now okay now what happens if we switch on the time base now this is interesting when you switch off the time base now it's basically you're doing the same thing all right now this imagine this is the the, the, the dot, lah, huh? I mean, this is the pencil. I get up, down, up, down, up, down. And you can actually demonstrate it by you take a pencil, take a piece of paper, you draw it up, down, up, down at the same spot. All right, like this, up, down, up, down. Now, this was the first one. Huh? Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, what you do is now, what happens if I stretch it? If I pull the paper, my pen is here, my pen is here, I'm doing up, down, up, down. And then on a piece of paper, let's say on a piece of paper, right, on a piece of paper. And then as I'm going up, down, up, down, I'm pulling the paper as I go along. I'm pulling the paper. So it will not be a line anymore. It will be a, a wave, all right? And you pull the paper as you're doing up and down, up and down. If you're able to do it, I think you cannot do it. Huh? You must somebody pull your paper because your hand coordination is difficult to do. You do this hand up and down, you cannot pull at the same time. It doesn't really work. So ask someone to pull the paper as you draw up and down, up and down. All right? So very simple. 
I don't have two person to help me. So let's say this is my pencil. So I draw up, down, up, down, up, down, and get someone to pull the paper slowly, slowly pull it, and then you will get the pattern up, down, up, down. You will get a wave. Okay, can't see it here. Right, I will show it under here. So this is originally. Don't pull the paper, you get one line. But as you pull the paper, you go up and down, up and down at the same time, right? At the same time, then you'll find the paper. Ah, you will see this pattern because your pencil is still moving up and down, up and down. And then the paper moves. The paper moves, then you see the wave. Okay, you can do that. You can try it. Uh, get your brother, sister, go pull the paper as you go up and down. You're going to see a very nice wave. Okay, so this is the wave pattern that you see. Okay, now again, you find that zero is here. So you will have a positive value here. You have a negative value here. Positive, negative. So at one moment, it's positive. Then the next moment, you see it dropped to negative. Then again, go back to positive. Okay, positive, negative, positive, negative, it switches direction. So that's why you get a very nice wave. Okay, this is called a sine wave, S I N E, sine, sinus. Okay, you learn that in, you do add maths in form four. Okay, you see the sine pattern. So now, what happens if I reverse the direction? Now, again, whatever is positive and yeah, negative, right? Now, I switch the wire around, I reverse the direction. All right. If I reverse the direction for this one, when you uh, switch off the time base knob, you don't see anything much. It's about the same because it's still going up and down, up and down. Just like you started, just now you start with positive, then you go to negative. Now you start with negative and positive. This is the opposite way, you need. just going the opposite direction. But still, you get the same pattern because the paper is not moving, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the time base knob is not switched on, right? So it's up and down, up and down, positive, negative, negative, positive, blah, 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 and all that. It's like going back and forth. Okay, now what happens if I switch on the time base knob? When I switch on the time base knob, okay, the same thing happens. Now, just now you started with positive first, and now you start with negative, all right? And then the paper starts to move along. Then you will see the pattern go in the opposite direction. Just now, what was positive here, you find this will be negative. You see the same direction, all right? This one is negative, this will be positive, all right? It is opposite now. Just now, when I started my graph with positive, and right, then it comes down, negative, like that, isn't it? So now it's going to be the opposite. Just now it's positive, now it's negative, so I might, my graph will look like that. Oh, sorry, yeah, like this. So it is like this, uh, okay? So it's the opposite, it's like, you know, just the exact, the balik gun your graph only, okay? Just remember that when you have your time base not switched on, you will get a pattern, a wave, if it's DC, uh, the AC. If it's DC, it's just one line only, if it's DC. So from here, you'll find that from the step 6 until 15, 6 is this one, 6 is the first one here, okay? 6 is this one, step number 6, this one, this is step number 6, this is step number 6, this is step number 7, all right? This is the pattern you get, then you have your 8, then your step number 9, okay? Then you have your step 13 here. This is step 14. All right, you see the different patterns. Then uh, 12. Uh, 12. Okay, maybe this is 12. All right, 12. Then it's 13. All right, and then you for 14 and 15. So this table, when you talk about what do they want here? Trace, observe. Trace means the pattern. So you're basically supposed to give the pattern only. Lah. And actually, the answer is already here. I get answers already given here. So when you ask for the trace, actually you're asking for the pattern when you do different things, whether, whether you switch on your time base knob or not. That's one thing. Another thing is how high is your current, okay, and whether it's AC or DC. So you have different patterns here. Understand? Okay. So this is what I want to share with you. Oh, one more thing, yeah, and we'll go to the last part here first before we uh, discussion for questions. Okay, let's look at, uh, because now we're not going to more key but things. Huh? So we need you to be more innovative. Huh? So there are nowadays more innovative uh, ways to generate electricity. The more traditional is, of course, the power station. Huh? And the most traditional using coal, okay, which I say is no good because of what? Because of pollution. Whatever combustion you have, you will have to uh, heat up things. Okay, so one of the... Uh, Newer innovations, okay, is solar cells. Ah. Of course, not so new. Lah. Solar cells have been around for about at least 30 years, okay, 30, almost uh, 30 years already, 20 to 30 years. So solar cells is one of the 
more innovative and very environmentally friendly. Okay, let's look at all this. Uh, solving problems related to electric supply in life. So what is our main concern? Okay, all the scientists, uh, what is our main concern in terms of energy usage? In terms of energy usage, the main concern is there is uh, what do you call a uh, very quickly, uh, the depletion of not of fossil fuel. Okay, we have been using fossil fuel since the beginning of man, since the beginning of mankind. There was a caveman when they discovered fire, then they know they started burning wood, right? And also later on, they, they found it's better to burn coal, then they discovered petroleum. So, since the beginning of time, uh, all these have been used, uh, have been used continually. And at one moment, they said that 2050, la, scientists have predicted 2050. Okay, there's about another 30 years, 20, 30, 29 years more to go, right? You'll all be in your middle ages already by that time, you have families and so on. All right, probably you will have hybrid cars, or not hybrid cars, electric cars, okay? And maybe, who knows, maybe cars can fly by that time, okay? I'm <laughs> hoping cars can fly, huh? And then you will have, hopefully, if humans go on in this direction of finding new uh, innovative methods and less polluting uh, methods of producing energy, you may have an energy free, uh, uh, pollution free and world at that time. So we have to keep on searching and keep on experimenting, okay, how to make our earth better. So here you see that most of our fuel, in fact, all of the 100% here, like, let's say, uh, of all the fossil fuel, most of them is natural gas, right, and the rest are consisting of petroleum, coal, and of water. Okay, so this is all fossil fuel. Lah. And I'm not sure why they put water here, all right? So this is all fossil fuel usage. Fossil fuel. Okay. So they will deplete. They will deplete. Deplete means they will finish in due time. Okay. So what we normally do is we are going to find alternative. The one that we're using now is hydro. But hydro comes with disadvantages. Can you tell me what are the disadvantages of uh using hydropower? Uh, generators or hydropower stations. Can someone just type it there? Tell me, uh, why don't we just all go for hydroelectric power station? Okay, why do we still resort to solar power station? Why are we trying to find even better ways of uh, innovation of uh, producing electricity? What is the disadvantage? Okay, maybe you can type here. I just want to see your response. How much you know about our issue here, our global issue? Okay. What, what is the disadvantage of uh, having this hydro power electric uh, hydro power stations? Okay, let me check. Uh, so far, nothing yet. Uh. Okay, maybe I'll come back to you in a while. Okay, then, uh, so renewable. So we are going more for renewable. We should have solar, okay, biomass, tidal wave, waves, and wind. They are all renewable energy. So what kind of uh, requirement should they fulfill? It must be easily available. That means you can get it easily. You can get, for example, sun. Sun, you can get it a lot. Uh, a lot of places in this earth uh, gets the sun, right? In fact, all, of, except for the North Pole and the South Pole, uh, which only gets a few hours of sunlight, and it's not very, very hot at that, that place there. The intensity is very low. Appropriate for that location also depends on where you are in this earth. Okay, of course, in the near the equator, yeah, we get sunshine. So we always we should be harnessing our uh, solar energy. Cheap, all right? That's why I'm trying to be more energy efficient. Cheap. Okay, so I see some response here. Uh, okay, so drought. Yes, so when you have drought, when you do not have enough water, the rainfall uh, reduces, you will find that the dam will not be at high capacity. Okay, then you will not have so much of the water to run the turbine. Limited reservoir, yes. And also not forgetting uh, to build a reservoir is expensive. Yes, high cost. Correct, high cost, uh, Stella. So it's high cost, expensive. And most importantly, um, you also will be affecting the uh, habitat of animals. Because when you build a dam, let's say you find you want to you decided to build a dam there, you have to of course do construction. When you construct this one, you will have to displace the animals that you have to cut down trees, isn't it? Cut down trees. You have to clear the forest in order to make your hydroelectric power station. So your animals there, the fauna and the flora, the you are actually affecting them because you're killing the animals because there's no place to stay. You're destroying the habitat. Okay, that's one of the 
Yes. Uh, carbon methane. Okay. Now emissions that you don't burn it because hydroelectric, you, you don't have any combustion there. So the good thing is no no pollution. But the bad thing is about hydroelectric is because of uh, you will displace the animals and the plants. You will actually destroying the habitat. Yes. Destroying wildlife habitat. That is the main concern about hydroelectric and also the high cost. Uh, and also you need to have a suitable lake. Right? You cannot have a you cannot have hydroelectric power station if you don't have a lake, a big suitable lake where you can have a lot of water stored there. Uh, and also, of course, drought. Uh, if it's drought, then you can't have water supply enough to produce electricity. Uh, okay, that is our main concern when you talk about hydroelectric power station. Uh. Yes, okay. So remember the wildlife, uh, the habitat. Okay, so now you also have what we call wireless charger. Okay, solar, you know, uh, solar we learned before. Uh, wait, uh, solar energy. Con, uh, is converted into electrical energy without pollution. So without affecting environment, this is one step. Okay, solar to electrical. Next one, wireless. I'm sure some of you are very, uh, you guys get your wireless uh, phone charger. Okay, wireless, the technology is quite recent also, right? Recently, we have put it into uh, charging. You know, Samsung, you have the wireless charger and so on. How does it work? So how it works is, of course, you have to plug the, 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 the charger to the socket first first of all you need to have the socket all right this is your power this is your socket all right so 240 volts this is your uh what they call the kmb la, the power source right? and then you go to the user charger this is your your plate here uh, this is where you put your phone on top all right this is your phone you don't need a wire there's no wire plugging into your phone okay no need to plug into your phone you just put your phone on top of the plate there okay you just put it on top of the charger it's like a plate there right just put it on top and it will charge it no need to a wire to plug into your phone how does it work so electrical energy right from the this one now in this device you call the wireless charger it converts it into another uh, another uh, energy which is called radio wave or microwave energy you need that uh, microwave is the same yes same microwave that you have in your microwave oven so it is a form of energy with wave uh, it is actually electro uh, magnetic wave so convert your electrical energy into microwave or radio wave which you cannot see it's just like basically like this like wave uh, uh, basically if you were to draw you draw these lines okay it's a wave and how radio when we listen to radio how come we can receive a signal from kl okay why they bought the, the radio station how come we receive it they, they transmit the, the the signal also using radio wave that's why we call it radio. So we can uh, change it to convert the electricity into radio wave first or microwave. And then when you put your phone on top, all right, this phone able to convert your radio wave or microwave back to electrical to charge your phone. So that means your phone must be a special one. It can be compatible to wireless charging. You cannot put my normal phone here. This one doesn't have, all right, put my normal phone there and put on the plate there because, because this one doesn't have the device to convert the microwave energy back into electrical energy. Okay, so that's how it works. Huh? So you have one extra step here, right? You convert your electrical to radio wave first. So you don't have wires, huh? no need wires. Then directly from the radio wave change to electrical. Okay, so this is wireless charging. So uh, the advantage is you don't no messy wires. Uh, that is the advantage. Okay, so I have discussed what I wanted to discuss for today's lesson. All right, and then uh, we will proceed to Google Meet, all right, for questions and also your exercises are in your workbook. All right, okay. So at the moment, we will stop here, right? Next lesson, we will start with something interesting. We talk about transformers, okay? Not your transformer cartoon, the series and all that, but it is a transformer, it's an electronic, uh, electrical device to do a certain job, all right? To convert the voltage of the current. Okay, right. So I will see you afterwards, all right? And for those out there who are not my students in class, okay? So I hope you have learned something from here. Yeah, I've actually mentioned a lot of things which I think you uh, rarely find uh, in unless you really search into it. Okay, so I hope you have benefited. So I will see you in my next lesson. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.